Hello everyone. So our topic for today is the operant conditioning. So we all know the operant or the instrumental conditioning is that form of learning which actually makes use of the reinforcement or punishment, you know, to either increase or decrease the behavior. So in this form of learning, of course, behavior can be learned, it can be maintained or even changed, uh, you know, through its consequences. So these consequences are nothing but reinforcers, you know. And a reinforcer is that stimuli or it's that event which actually increases the probability of the occurrence of a desired response. So basically the reinforcer has a lot many features, you know, which in a way are going to affect the course and strength of a response, you know. So let us really understand what are some of the factors. So coming to, of course, the types of reinforcement, we have the positive or the negative reinforcement. Pertaining to the positive reinforcement, it's talking about that stimuli, which is going to have a pleasant consequence, you know. So of course, such reinforcements are going to help maintain the response, strengthen response all the more, you know. And uh, of course, because the responses have been strengthened and uh, they have been able to maintain it. So, of course, they will also happen to occur again, you know. So, what is the role of these positive reinforcers? They satisfy needs, you know, like uh, that can include food, water, praise, appreciation, money, medals, even status for that matter. Negative reinforcers they are actually involving the unpleasant or so to say the painful stimuli, you know. And whatever response that the organism is going to make, of course, that response will help the organism to get rid of the painful stimuli or to basically avoid it and to be able to escape from them, you know. So, uh, negative reinforcement will lead to such kind of a learning, you know, which is going to, uh, in a way, lay, uh, which is going to help them in a way to avoid and make some uh, escape responses, you know. So, of course, um, then, of course, so we have, uh, for instance, if we talk about uh, winter cold, you know. So, winter cold is nothing but a painful stimuli. You know, so what can be my response made to this winter cold, the chill uh, well, weather outside, you know, the chilly wind outside, you know, so it is but a painful stimuli, isn't it? So what can be my response made? Of course, my response made to it will be that I'll make use of some woolen clothes or I'll make use of some heater or maybe I'll make use of some uh, hot water bottles because I'm trying to make a response in a way that's going to uh, escape this uh, bitter winter cold, which is actually the painful stimuli here, you know. So I'm going to try and avoid it. So for me, I'm in a way trying to make an escape response to it, basically. So uh, also that uh, when we talk about uh, negative reinforcement, it is not the same as punishment because punishment is actually trying to reduce or in a way completely suppress the response, you know. While when we talk about negative reinforcements, they increase the probability of escape response. So uh, there, in case of negative reinforcement, escape response uh, in a way increases. And in punishment, your response is absolutely suppressed. So if we talk about, you know, going back to the same example, that what if on pressing the lever, the rat actually got an electric shock. So the rat will not press the lever. So in a way, the response has been suppressed, you know, or it has been reduced uh, tremendously. But uh, in case of the chill, cold weather, you know, chilly winds blowing, literally that which is but the uh, painful or very unpleasant stimuli, I'm going to make use of something else or I'm going to, in a way, uh, escape this uh, painful stimuli by literally uh, responding in a different way which means that I might just put on winter clothes or go and sit in front of a heater that's what is negative reinforcement you know so of course uh, even when we talk about uh, uh, you know a uh, lot of people uh, while driving we see so much of uh, 
uh, the, you know, the traffic police all around being so vigilant, keeping a check. Literally, we have to be so cautious because we don't want to be fined. You know, we don't want to be unnecessarily fined or charged money. So to avoid that, we will respond in a way uh, by which I can actually avoid this uh, kind of a stimuli of being fined. So what will I do? I will actually follow all the traffic rules. I'm going to wear the belt. I'm, I'm going to make sure that I don't break any kind of uh, rule. Uh, you know, I actually follow the traffic lights, you know. And so this is how I'm trying to, um, uh, you know, differentiate between what's a punishment and a negative reinforcement. So, of course, even in punishment, we see that literally uh, your uh, response may not get uh, suppressed uh, permanently, you know. And uh, if the punishment is very strong, of course, the suppression uh, is going to be uh, long lasting. But again, we cannot say that it's going to be permanent, actually, you know, because um, it all comes down to uh, how strong is the punishment, essentially, you know. And uh, when we talk about the next feature, it's all about number of reinforcement and other features. So there are three important features that come under this. One is, of course, the number of trials. Second is the amount. And the third is, of course, the quality of reinforcement. So number of trials, amount of reinforcement and quality of re reinforcement, if we come to see, uh, basically, if uh, they are accelerated, you know, uh, to an extent, of course, uh, the uh, when we talk about uh, the cause of uh, operant conditioning, uh, of course, it's going to be in a way uh, good, it's going to be quite accelerated, if all these three are in a way increased. So if all three are increased, operant conditioning, the entire process will be accelerated. So if I come to the number of trials, uh, which is uh, how many times, uh, you know, on repeat has this been uh, uh, repetitive or it's actually happened again and again. So how many times uh, have we tried to repeat the same experiment of literally taking the rat and putting it into the chamber and, uh, you know, uh, going through the entire procedure again. So the number of trials uh, and, uh, of course, uh, even reinforcing the rat. Uh, or rewarding the rat, it all counts in the entire procedure, entire uh, experiment. So the number of trials would mean how many times I've repeated this, you know, putting the rat into the chamber and the rat showing exploratory behavior, then by chance pressing the lever and getting a food pellet. So the entire thing, how many times I've repeated. So if it's a good number of times, uh, if the number increases, of course, I can really accelerate, accelerate the entire operant conditioning process, you know. Then, of course, when we talk about the amount of reinforcement, uh, it's like uh, how much uh, amount of food are you reinforcing, uh, you know, uh, in terms of food, water, you know, and if it is to do with the... Uh, uh, anything painful, you know, we are just talking about the amount actually. Then of course, uh, quality is, uh, what's the quality essentially? Uh, how good is the quality of the reinforcer? You know, even when, it, when we talk about, let's say, something to do with food, then uh, generally there is something which is inferior, there is something which is superior, there is always a superior quality of uh, uh, food reinforcer they can also be um, you know like literally um, a low quality or a poor quality of uh, reinforcer also so um, so basically all these have increased if uh, it's on the higher side then definitely we can accelerate the process of operant conditioning schedules of uh, reinforcement we come to see uh, generally, you know, uh, schedules basically can be uh, how much are you reinforcing the uh, subject. The subject here, I mean, is the rat, you know, so how much are you reinforcing the subject, basically. So my subject here is the rat because I'm actually performing the experiment on the rat. So uh, that calls in for the schedules of reinforcement. So we do have... Uh, continuous or the intermittent uh, uh, 
uh, reinforcement of course intermittent is something that's not continuous you know and when we talk about continuous it would mean that every time you know uh, a desired response is reinforced you know uh, every time it occurs you know so when a desired response uh, is reinforced each time it actually occurs so that is co continuous that whenever the rat is going to press the lever the rat will be rewarded the rat will get a full food pellet every time on pressing the lever that is continuous reinforcement but when I talk about the intermittent or so to say when I talk about the partial you know and uh, intermittent actually means that sometimes the rat will be reinforced and sometimes the rat may not be reinforced so that's what partial is all about partial reinforcement and uh, so in partial reinforcement, uh, it's unlike the continuous schedules because in partial schedules, uh, we only reinforce the desired behavior occasionally, you know, rather than all the time. Because in continuous reinforcement, we are uh, uh, actually rewarding uh, the behavior every time uh, the behavior is shown. So every time he's going to show this behavior of uh, pressing the lever, the rat will receive a food pellet. But in case of partial, that's not going to be the case, you know, not uh, every time, but occasionally the rat will be rewarded, you know. So, of course, when uh, the rat will be rewarded, rewarded occasionally pertaining to uh, the partial reinforcement, that will actually lead to slower learning, you know, because, uh, you know, initially, uh, you know, initially it is... Uh, more difficult to make the, uh, you know, so to say, association between behavior and reinforcement, you know, if we come to see, you know. Um, so, uh, in partial uh, schedules, uh, they also produce behavior that is more resistant to extinction, you know. So, of course, uh, one drawback is that uh, in partial reinforcement, the learning aspect will become slow, you know. And uh, but the other aspect to it is that uh, <clears throat> that it's going to produce behavior that will be more resistant to extinction, you know. So that means the behavior is not going to extinct or it's not going to completely uh, vanish out uh, all at once. Because, you know, we've noticed this that organisms are tempted, you know, to persist in their behavior in the hopes that they will eventually be rewarded you know so there is a tendency always in uh, organisms that uh, you know they have this feeling that okay let us wait uh, you know uh, let us keep trying you know because maybe in the end we will be rewarded for this so you know so they are always tempted to persist in their behavior that is why in case of uh, partial reinforcement uh, there is a greater resistance to extinction pertaining to, of course, the behavior. But definitely when we talk about learning aspects, uh, learning will be slow there, you know. But uh, definitely uh, in terms of their behavior, that is definitely going to be uh, showing a greater resistance to extinction. And um, so, of course, uh, moving on, we have... Um, the last one, which is the delayed reinforcement, which is talking about uh, literally uh, how the effectiveness of reinforcement is uh, going to dramatically alter by the delay in the occurrence of uh, reinforcement. So, of course, uh, whenever there is going to be a delay in the delivery of reinforcement, there will be a very low level of performance. Literally, the level of performance will keep going down if there is a delay in the delivery of reinforcement. We have noticed this because uh, many a times when uh, we are playing games with children or we do this in classrooms also and we tell them that, you know, uh, you behave nicely and you will be rewarded, uh, you know. Soon you will be given a reward for this. Uh, so the child will make efforts every day to to literally show the best of his or her behavior and keeps waiting that, you know, ma'am will reward me or, uh, you know, I'm going to be recognized or there's a certificate coming, there's a medal coming or there's a chocolate coming. 
you know but you know that keeps getting postponed and there's no sign of anything like that coming soon so generally that kids you know in a way actually uh, they feel in a way discouraged and you know uh, they get uh, literally tired or waiting also they lose the into to fight further and uh, you know so then of course uh, they ultimately uh, uh, in a way just um, uh, give up on fighting anymore or to literally show up with the best of their behavior because uh, now the enthusiasm and the 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 curiosity in them or rather the weight in them has come to an end and they've got in a way exhausted and they they actually feel that nothing like that is going to happen you know so the performance will start coming down rather but if you just keep uh, some small rewards or uh, weekly rewards or when if we keep uh, uh you know like um, fortnightly awards uh you know something like that that's going to also encourage them you know but these um uh long gap rewards which actually calls in for a huge gap in between it's going to definitely affect the performance you know of uh, the concerned child you know it's going to tip the performance of the concerned concerned child because he's been waiting for it and uh, you know and with this wait that okay it's going to happen it's going to happen okay tomorrow tomorrow so that you know tomorrow literally sometimes it never comes and it greatly uh, discourages the child you know and so they don't want to fight anymore so they give up on the fight actually so instead when it's uh, something instant something immediate that's that's effective rather than a delayed uh, uh you know reinforcement that's going to definitely make the performance low or literally uh, very poor so this was all about the determinants of operant conditioning thank you so much